Hey, what up, America? This your boy, Bouchon Glover, Better Black America TV on YouTube. Now, today is uh, Monday, August 19th, 2019. Now, driving around the city today, you know, I listen to Big Boy in the morning, and uh, the topic of discussion on the radio show on 92.3 The Beat uh, was uh, the, the Jay-Z partnering up with the NFL. Now, I heard about the story last week. I read a couple articles, looked at some blogs and some, you know, some people's channels and their opinion. So, you know, I was like, okay, there has to be a bigger picture. There has to be a bigger picture. And then now that the, the census is 50-50, you got people either they loving it or they hating it, you know, and people are really going in and saying some things of, of uh, uh, in a sense of uh, Jay-Z, whose name is Sean Carter, um, you know, being pretty hypocritical, you know, when last year he was very vocal and talking to Travis Scott in the sense of, you know, not performing, uh, talking to different people, talking about the NFL, y'all need me more than I need you. And, you know, basically going in and then Jay-Z was on Meek Mill's album, the champion, uh, champion album with Meek Mill. And he was kind of getting a little radical. It was kind of getting a little radical and he was saying things, you know, like, you know, hair free and, you know, uh, we free. And, you know, he was just basically going in and I understand, you know, because once I got out of, you know, the government contract stuff, you know, I grew my beard, grew my hair, you know, so I understand what he was talking about. But he was getting a little radical. And the only person, the only person that could have bankrolled the movement was somebody like Jay-Z. OK, but now if you understand uh, uh, um laws of power if you understand the game when you're talking about the grand scale and the big scheme of things i'm gonna keep it 100 percent with you the nfl played jay-z you got played bruh now who's the dumbo because you still nigga and i'm just keeping it 100 with you man like i said i'm like a bro a cousin or whatever you know i'm just basically telling you how it is because you keep your friends close and your enemies even closer. So let's invite this guy to the table and partner up with him. Now, the original story came out, you know, with the interviews that came out last week was talking about, you know, you'll be, you know, Jay's, uh, the NFL's partnering up with uh, Rock Nation and Rock Nation will be responsible for the halftime show and the entertainment. I said, OK, they got the nigga singing and dancing again. Here we go. But then now that the census is out and everybody's talking about, you know, this BS and it's hypocritical and, you know, it, 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 it what is it going to do for police brutality? What is it going to do uh, for for the the social injustice and everything that started the the Colin Kaepernick protest in a nutshell? That's what started it. It was about police brutality and shedding light on things like that. And that's why he chose to take a knee. But then now they ask about you taking the knee. You say we well past that now. I get it. We are past that now. But when you talk about action, when you talk about action, what type of action can you do now moving forward now that you partner up? So now that the last week, you know, every, you know, people was basically saying a lot of negative things based on the partnership. And now all of a sudden this week, they're trying to say, oh, it's about ownership. There's no NFL teams for sale. You're not about to own an NFL team, okay? That's what they call damage control. So it could get people because they like to control the narrative. So now you'll get somebody who's a Jay-Z super fan and he'll, they'll sit back and say, no, he's going to be an owner. I've heard people say that already. He's not going to be an owner. The NFL, don't they don't sell their teams like that. That is a, that is, a, you know, like I said, I'm not going to go into the NFL. We're going to stick to the, uh, the, the, the topic of discussion and that's, what really happened and moving forward because when you look at at the end of the day we can have a great halftime show i can I, we can bet on that but when it comes to making a change in in the community making a change uh from a social and economic perspective from the black uh community it's not going to happen because one of the brothers that could have seen it, that could have single-handedly bankrolled the operation to advance the black race was somebody like jay-z but now you got to see at the table, but they put you on. Now I'm from LA, you know, I understand game banging and all of that stuff. So they're not going to put somebody on to have their own agenda. Once they put you on, you're a part of them and it's blood in and blood out. So if you were to become radical or to say anything outside of supporting the NFL or anything that will tarnish the NFL brand, you're going to have a price to pay because at the end of the day, if they make you, they could break you blood in blood out if they put you on you own so they, they they're they're trying to 
you know, it, it's manipulative, but it's game. You got to recognize game because you keep your friends close, your enemies closer. So since Jay-Z became, started to be radical, making songs called Still Nigga and uh, uh, talked about hair free and all of this stuff. And I'm free and talking about breaking the chains and shackles, you know, on Meek Mill's champion album and some of your some of your last work. Ah, we got to shut this Negro up. We got to sit him at the table. He got to be one of us because if he's sitting at the table, can't say nothing we could control what he says because now that he's partners up partnered up with us now he's one of us it's like saying you know what that's field nigga out there he been he been such a good field nigga for me he done made me so much money i think it's about time to go ahead and have this field nigga come into the house we finna make him a house nigga and once you get in that house you're going to be the liaison between massa and the field nigga because you used to be one so game recognize game, man. You got to play like a banjo, bruh. So with this injustice in the black movement, it's going to have to be a black movement for blacks by blacks. OK, and number one, we got to we got to get back to black. That's number one. We're not African-American and, we'll, and I'll be talking about that uh, moving down the road. So we're African-American. You can't be two continents. OK, we're black people. So we got to get back to black. You know, OK, we got to do it ourselves because at the end of the day, everybody else is looking for their disposition. But and then when you talking about cherry picking the top, you know, one of the creams, cherry picking the top took one of the best ones that was riding for us. Now we pass all that now. Now we're supposed to just move on. And tomorrow we'll commemorate the 400 gear curse being over that the black man free. And the narrative is talking about Jay-Z partnering up with the NFL. It's basically like saying the first black man is about to be a slave master. If y'all don't knock it off, you got played, bruh. Who's the Dumbo now? Dumbo.